Okay, so welcome back. So today we are going to start with uh, differentiation chapter. Actually not start, like it's a continuation. Because last week I already done three parts of it. So now we continue to the second half of it. Lah. So I won't repeat that one, the back one, like I don't want to waste time. So I'll just like ask one question from each of the subtopic, lah, I'll say, okay? So first thing is called idea of limits, right? So what is the most important thing to consider when you're doing this question, idea of limits? What is the thing you will avoid? Anyone? A white crying count. What is crying count? Correct. Yeah, very good. So that's the answer. Denominators should not be equal to zero. So that is our main aim when we do this first uh, what idea of limits thing. Like, because if you do any number over zero, even zero over zero, you still get what infinity. Like. So any number you divide zero, that is a dangerous risk. So whenever you see like idea of limits, right, they can be like insert form the square root thing, right? So if it's insert form, you need to like use your conjugate third knowledge. Remember in chapter four, search chapter, they are they told you how to actually like times the equation given with let's say third five plus three. If the other side is third five minus three, you have to times uh third five plus three over third five plus three. Because whenever you modify the equation, right? You are, you modify must be one, means you times one, means you don't change the overall structure of the equation, okay? So that's one thing good. And then next is uh, first principles, also a common exam question. So first principles, right? Uh, what are the steps involved when you do first principles? Anyone? Quite a common question also like you will see they'll say like find the what uh derivative of this equation using first principle so they specify the method means you have to show that method only like you cannot just do dy over dx equals what you have to show like a long step like that it's found in your textbook also actually like. so what are the steps Yeah, correct. Delta. Delta is a good point. Uh, in fact, that is the first step. Yeah, good. So first thing is what we'll do is we'll add delta y to the y variable. Means like y plus delta y. And then if you add delta y here, right, means on your x variable, you also have to put x plus delta x. Then only is equal, equivalent. But that's what we want in admit. So everything that you modify on the left-hand side of an equation must be equal to the right-hand side. So that's the important thing. Okay? So, well, finally, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, we'll continue. Lah. So, and then the next step, uh, anyone? Lah? We are doing now uh, what first principle differentiation. So, what is the next step we will do to continue our working? Like any idea what's your next step when you do uh, first principles? Others also are not really, ah, finally, they are just asking, but does the first principle include, yeah, correct. It has got, uh, there is something called limit. So that is your last step, actually. You will put delta x limit to zero. That's the final part where we will find the, delta y over delta x so that's your last step actually so in between there's a few more steps so actually like step two three and four so you can like uh describe a bit about that also uh actually your step actually like includes step four and five if step four is actually delta y over delta x and then finally you will say delta x approaches zero so that's your assumption la. so if step two and three what's the other two
I forgot what's first principle. So uh, I'll tell lah uh, in case. Okay, so first principle, right? Uh, first, what you said was correct, right? Add delta y. And then the next one is actually simultaneous. Means when you form an equation with delta y already, right? Means you label that equation as number two. And you have the equation as the question as your number one. Because your first equation they give in question is y equals dot 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 x like that, right? And then the second one is we will put y plus delta y equals dot 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 x plus delta x. So from there, right, you can eliminate your y variable, 2 minus 1, right, elimination method. So we will cancel the y and then finally we will leave with del left with delta y equals something, something, something in delta x, let's say. Lah. So from there, you will expand, expansion, because sometimes it can be x plus delta x power 2 square means you have to do like quadratic expansion i think the one we are familiar with it right so the one is basics la. okay so yeah that's all the steps for that and then uh okay so have you heard about this thing called chain rule in differentiation la, of course ah, okay so where is actually chain rule applied which chapter Not in this chapter, I mean like other chapters in the syllabus. Yeah, correct, index chapter, very common. So that is when you involve three years, remember, huh? three years. So if two years is your normal algebra, lah, you put x over a certain year times 100 equals to the index itself. Lah. Okay. So then the next thing is about tangents and normal. Okay. So if we go from curve to tangent, what is the uh, process we use during curve to tangent? The symbol, I mean, because there's three things, remember, curve, tangent, and normal. So the relationship between curve and tangent, how do we like interconvert between both of them? Actually, this chapter gives you the hint already to the answer. You should know the Remember dy dx? Anyone? Is it the x square? Is it the is it, yeah correct? That's dy dx, la. Means you reduce your x power by one. Means like x power three, you come x power two. X power two, you come x x only, la. So yeah, that's the thing. And then uh what is the relationship between tangent and normal? Important thing also. This one you actually learn from coordinate geometry, a formula that is the same thing actually. 90 degrees, yeah, good, good point, like perpendicular, right? So what's the formula behind it? M1, M2, yeah, very good. So yeah, that's all about the questions, yeah. So we have covered that already. And then now, let me think, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we are going to do uh, like something like a good explanation about different fiction love and okay so we see here right i actually did like two ways can anyone can everyone see here like clearly can you see because quite far away if someone cannot see can uh? oh can okay la. so uh first i'm going to introduce to you how to remember differentiation and integration so this is my own way, la, what I created, okay? So I divide it into two ways. As you can see, one is called the maths way, and another one is called the bio way. So now you might think, why am I doing this actually, right? Anyone might, might want to voice out the objection why I'm doing this for this chapter. La. So it's actually quite an effective way I found out. So let me think. Huh? Okay, you learn insurance, right? All of you still remember insurance? Chapter 3, Modern Maths, Form 5. Insurance chapter. Okay, good. So, we have four policies actually in this chapter. One, two, three, four. So, four uh, policies. 
So what I'm trying to tell you is, you see, comprehensive policy is the most complex one, right? And then the bottom one is the most simple. So what is the idea here? So of course I ask you. So if you, if I say something is general, right? Is it complex or simple? You think? If I say something is general, is the first idea a lot to use this technique. General means complex or simple. You see, even. Yeah, correct. It, how come you thought simple? Actually, it's not a good way to tell it. La. General means complex. La. Just remember it. La. So it's easier to understand this one. An easier way is you just remember general. La. You don't need to think of another way. Uh, unsimple mistake only. La. So it's specific, right? Specific, if I say specific, means it's simple. This is the clue. La. One way to remember SS, right? Start with the letter S. Specific and simple. So general means complex, la. okay? So now we are going to four policies. Comprehensive policy, third party fire and theft policy. Third party policy and, oh, it's not wrong. La. That's supposed to be act policy. So if I go downwards, right? What do you think is this process? If I go from here to here, can you all relate to this chapter or not? What's the process behind it? If I go from comprehensive to act policy. Converse, what's converseless? Uh, either it's the answer is either differentiation or integration, la, basically. So if you go from something complex to simple, what do we call it? You can relate to here. Anything complex, you come simple. What will be the process behind it? Love? Become simpler is integration. Uh, don't get confused. Remember the power concept. Ah, correct. Yeah, it's differentiation actually. This way, love. Because you know, right, when you differentiate, right, the power is reducing means the equation generally should become more simple. Yeah, correct, that's the explanation. So when you reduce the power, the whole equation will come like shorter and condensed like that. Lah. So this is the idea why I call from here to here is differentiation. So if I say opposite, what will be the process? From act to comprehensive policy. The opposite of differentiation. Lah. Ah, so you got it at the integration, correct? So this is my way, because sometimes right, we might like what mm, forget uh, what differentiation means, add or reduce the power, integration, add or reduce the power. So this is the way, one of the ways, love, how to remember. So if you go from simple to complex, means it's integrate. From complex to simple is differentiate. So you have to understand the term, love, differentiate and integrate. Okay, so this is the first part. And then now, especially for uh, bio students and Lila. So this is the way. La. So remember your what? Uh, chapter 2, Form 4. Remember this flow, cell organization? Yeah, OK. So uh, this flow, cell to tissue to organ to system to organism. This actually applies the same concept of simple and complex. So if I say about cell, you think cell is something complex or simple? Turn tricky, yeah? Uh, sorry, this one is not a good example. That's why I thought. Uh, sorry, I said we should not use this way. Think, uh, is cell something general or simple? I wouldn't say complex or specific. No. General or specific? If I say cell, just a cell, Yeah, correct. <laughs> Means I know who works the according to this. <laughs> Good job. So cell and then uh, this one specific one. Huh? Organism is specific one. Huh? Uh, because why? Because in organisms, we have certain systems, right? Blood circulatory system. From here, right, we understand they work together to carry out a specific function. Remember the keyword is specific function. Means as you progress along this chart, you're getting more and more specific. Okay? 
So if you go this way, this way is called differentiation. And I think the question also asked like that. What they will ask, they'll draw this out with certain examples. And then they'll say, ask you, what is this process? The answer is actually differentiation, if you remember. Huh? So this is why they actually call it differentiation, because it's from general to specific. So simple and complex in this example, don't use luck. It's a bit like uh, what controversial, might not get it right. Okay, so this is one way. Opposite would be integration, no? if I go this way. Means you integrate, no? okay, so far all okay. Things should be okay. No? So this one, right? So now is the another example for you to remember. No? So let's say I got uh what uh root this one is your chapter five from one. Okay, so this one we have three zones, I would say. No? So this bottom zone, right, where it's at the root cap, we call it zone of cell division. And then the middle zone is zone of cell elongation. And then the last zone is zone of cell differentiation. So already give you a clue already. So if I go this way, what is this process from bottom to top? From bottom to top, you can see the diagram. What do you think is this process? And we go from cell division to differentiation. Means first thing you have to ask is, does it come more specific or general la, when I go up this way? The whole thing. La. We call it bio. La. It's nothing to do with that. Maths here. Yeah, differentiation. And because why I say this is, because down here, if you remember, right, your zone of cell division, what it consists of is just actively dividing cells to mitosis, which is meristematic cells. But then up here, right, uh, differentiation, they are already differentiated to specific tissues like phloem and xylem. So this is why it's called differentiation, because they are already differentiated to carry out a specific function like transporting water and mineral salts and uh, transport organic substance from the leaves to other parts of plant. So that's why I call it differentiation this way. So if I go the other way, means integration. Huh? Okay, so these are the three examples I actually thought about huh? how to memorize this whole thing. Huh? So hope it's useful. Huh? Okay. So that's done for this. Later, I'll send this in the group. Maybe it'll be useful. No? So now we shall continue. Uh, let me think. OK, we talk about differentiation now. We go to the chapter, hopefully. If anyone want to open the mic also, you can open so that's more lively. Huh? Okay, so now we continue with... Uh... <laughs> but then it's the opposite when I am facing him. Huh? <laughs> now I say this because I feel how it feels to like not have any sound in the ears. No? So that's okay. So now we go to the fourth part. Uh, okay. Rate of change of related quantities. So this is quite a famous question also in the exam. If you see, no? if you do your trial papers, you will notice. Uh, about this topic. If differentiation comes, surely one question will come about this. They won't, you can't escape. So what they're actually telling here is, let me give an example. 
let's say a cylinder, right? Like this. Uh, okay. So let's say the height is this. The radius is R. And then let's say I tell you a statement here. Mm. We have to know the first the formulas, of course. So let's say I give you the formula volume is 1 over 3. Wait, not 1 over 3. Pi R square H. This is the formula for volume of cylinder. Okay, so this one is your max basics. Last, so you have to know this to apply here. Okay, so then uh, let me say, let's say the radius decreases from 2 cm to 1.98 cm. So it's something like approximate changes, I like, would say. So yeah, this is the thing, like it's a small change in a certain value. So in this case, it's the radius that's changing. So now let's say I tell that, that we have to do differentiation first. Huh? So let's say I differentiate this equation. What do you get? Anyone? dv over dr. What will be the answer? Two pi r h. Okay, good. So that's your answer for this one. Uh, yeah, correct. Okay, so after you differentiate this, I have to give your height value. So let's say the height is 5 cm. Okay, we fix it at 5 cm, not constant. So from here, we can actually sub the values inside. So first thing is when you do dv over dr, actually, I don't need to say decrease because this is not approximation yet. This is another subtopic. So let's say the radius is 2 cm directly. No need to make things complicated. So after I differentiate, I sub the value. And then I sub the height. So we will get 25. That's your dv over dr. So now let's say I want to find um, dA over dt. Let's say this is the question. Huh? Mm, wait, let me think. Uh, DA over DR. Okay. So, DV, sorry, no, you're not doing area. DV over DT. Okay. So, now what's the thing here is you know, have to know how to apply the rate of change rule here. So, you do DV over DR times DR over DT. So, this is the formula huh? you have to use here because you want to eliminate the DR to get this one. Okay, and you notice here we already found a value of dv over dr. But what are we lacking now in this question? What value are we lacking? Which symbol? Rate of change of radius. Yeah, correct. So that's how you read it actually. Rate of change of radius. Anything divided by time means rate. Means per second is the concept behind it. So now let's say... Uh, Rate of change of radius. Mm. I give the value, la. let's say it's 0 0.093 cm per second. We just do a simple example, la. we don't have to complicate things. So 25 times 0 0.093. So what I'm interested here is actually the final unit. What is the final unit of this question? The pi value can be anything. La. We follow the question, what they say. Let's say I assume it's 3.142. I will get 5.844. So what is the unit at the back here? CM cube per second. Yeah, very good. Because we are actually taking volume over time. Volume is CM cube. Time is second, you shift the second on top, you will get S negative one means per second. Okay, so this is an example for you for this uh, rate of change. Okay, so far all good. Hmm? Actually, I'm going to finish the chapter already, second last part already. The front parts I will just send what I 
showed last week. Okay, so we continue. So the next part is actually quite an interesting part also, if you see. The next part is called stationary points. So quite an important topic also. Okay, so let me ask for stationary points, what's the assumption we make in our working? What is the equation you'll come out with? Yeah, correct. dy over dx is zero. And does anyone know other keywords that they can tell in the question to represent uh, stationary points? Turning point, yeah, that's one of it. Turning point is a good keyword. And then let me think. Uh, I think that's all. Okay, just keep one more. Okay, so uh, maximum point. Maximum point is a different thing. Maximum point, you want to find, we'll use this formula. Maximum point means the graph crying, right? Crying curve. Means it's d2y over dx2 less than zero. If this curve you remember, right, your a value is less than zero. So a common way to an easy way to remember is your second derivative is less than zero. This is second derivative. So don't get confused, lah. So it's your second one. Okay. And then minimum is the opposite. Lah. It will be greater than zero. It means your A is greater than zero this way. So sometimes the question will say find the turning points. And then they'll say and hence state whether the turning point is a maximum point or a minimum point. So first of all, you have to start with this. And then continue your working to this. There are two steps involved, two answers that you should give the examiner, okay? So these are the two things. So now I will show a graph that can represent the whole thing, uh, a diagram. Huh? So let's say my y-axis is here. It's quite long, this one. x-axis is here, 0. And then it goes like this. A good graph actually to show everything. So let me think. Uh, I will divide this into one, two, three, three points. So first point is here, second point is here, third point is here. So this point, what is the formula we will use to find it? Down one here. Sun is actually like a quadratic also like you see the shape of this graph. Uh, honestly, no idea, so it's okay. So uh, like this, remember this shape, right? Isn't this shape same like this shape? Can you see the similarity? This shape and this shape, the curve at the bottom. Ah, so we only care about the curve at the bottom, not whether it's like completely a quadratic like this. This one they didn't show you, so we don't care about this one. As long as we already see halfway or three quarter of a way quadratic, right? This one will apply this rule. So d square y over dx two more than zero because it's a minimum point where a is more than zero. So this is the answer. The formula that we use to calculate uh, the value of this point. Okay. So if I ask you this one, this point over here, on a flat line, what will be the formula?
the don't get confused with uh, this thing. Uh, not d2y over dx2, so it's dy over dx only. We won't do d2y over dx2 equals to zero in any. Hey, wait, wait. Uh, yeah, it can be two answers actually. There's two possibilities. It can be also d2y over dx2 equals zero. But more commonly, we will use this lab because they'll give you a y equation, right? Something, something, something. And then the first option is we will go here. Then only if you want to differentiate again, we will go here. So this is like your first choice, lah. This is your second choice. Okay. So yeah, the clue is equals to zero. This is the keyword, uh, key number, lah, the keyword. So equals zero. So if I ask this point, uh, what is the value related to the shape of the graph? I mean, what's the formula we use? Again. Oh, uh, this part here, right? This uh, uh, shape here. So, what formula we actually use to find this point here at the peak of the curve? Dy. Not this one, don't get confused. This one is dy over dx is zero. When a straight line only, when a point lies on a straight line, means your axis, right? Let's say like this. Here only dy over dx is zero. Because why? dy over dx is actually representing the gradient. That's what you need to know here. Means the relationship is m equals dy over dx. This is what you can deduce from this. So if you see, right? If in a straight line means your y equation equals to, let's say, 1. You know, when it's horizontal line, right, your equation will be like y equals to a constant. And if you realize, right, if you do dy over dx of this, what's your answer? 0. Because when you differentiate a constant, you will get 0. That's the rule of differentiation. So that's why any straight line, like here, you will get equal zero. But if it's on a point on a peak of a curve, uh, the situation will be different. Nah? So actually, it's d2y over dx2 less than zero. Remember this one? When your a less than zero, your curve will be crying. And it's like this shape. Does it make sense now? Point of infliction is d2y of over dx2 equals 0. Uh, what is point of infliction? Which part? Oh, that part. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, wait, I love this first. Sun looks a bit confusing. Not on the. What's WB? Oh. The set face line. Uh, that's the clue behind it. I show you here. Let's say I got a curve, la random curve. So let's say like this. If this curve does it have a maximum or minimum point? If I see a curve like this for Rosalind Lab, max, yeah, correct. Because it's on top of the curve, right? Like a mountain, you climb, climb from here, and then you reach here, you reach the maximum point of the mountain. Okay, so this is called max point. And then what we know from a max point is, uh, let's say, I give you an equation of a curve. Let's say negative x squared plus 3x minus 4. Legit, right? Because if it's greater than 0, you must have a negative sign, right? So how do I show this? Let's say I do dy over dx. 
negative two x plus three. If I do second derivative, right? You see what I get? Negative two, right? And then based on the concept d two y over dx two less than zero means a is less than zero means this is a maximum point because this graph actually represents a less than zero see here negative one you see at the end when i do second derivative right i get a value of negative two which is less than zero ah so now you catch it so yes about the relationship lah, about this a value and d2y over dx2 okay so yeah that's basically it on this part uh yeah I told everything a bit so okay all uh, right this part we need um Wow, you're still staying, are you, Eka? Thought you're supposed to go, already. You cancel the class, is it? Oh, wow. The class cancel, or you don't want to go? Actually, need. Ah, it's okay. You can go, lah. Because I got the rest here to help me. Got many people here. Okay, hope it was useful. Okay. <laughs> hey, not you. <laughs> you are staying inside here. Okay, so next one uh, small changes and approximation. Oh. <laughs> I interpreted it wrongly. Okay, so next one is uh, small changes and approximations. Last stop topic already. And then we can go to vectors. Uh, yeah, for time. Okay, so first one, this one. Okay, let me think. Huh? Mm. This actually is related to your first principles, if you notice. Because in first principles, right, what you find at the end is actually delta y over delta x equals to what? Let's say something, something x. Okay? You will get like this, right? And then they will tell you a relationship here where your dy over dx is equivalent to delta y over delta x. So why they say this is actually why, you know, when you give an equation like y equals, let's say, 2x squared plus 3x, if you do dy over dx, you get 4x plus 3, okay? And your objective in first principle is you must get this answer as well. That's your final goal when you use your long method in first principle. So this is how they come up with a formula like this. This sign means equivalent. A wavy sign like that it means equivalent in maths lah. so this is why they came up with this formula to count lah. okay so um yeah that's basically you can try with an example lah. let's say uh mm -hmm. can be anything lah. the area of a circle is pi r square so let's say I tell the radius, now uh, this is where I can use that example, decreases from 2 cm to 1.98 cm. Find the approximate change in the area of the circle. Means you need to list out certain keywords from here, uh, this question. So let me see this. Okay, everything. Uh, okay, this question is valid. So, what's the first keyword you can catch from here? How are you going to approach this thing? You see this statement, I think I'm blocking it. With what can you 
uh, interpret from this. What is the symbol you can keluarkan from this statement anywhere? Uh, whiteboard not clearly lagging. Uh, you can rejoin if you want. Uh, is it 198? Uh, wait, uh, 1.98. 1 1.98. 1 cm. Yeah. So that is actually one in four years if you notice this part decreases from 2 cm to 1.98 cm. So what is the symbol we use to represent this? Delta X. Careful, huh? this question is not just Y and X. It's, they give you a quantity radius here. Yeah, R. So it's delta R. So your delta R will be... Uh, wait a yeah, take. I think it's this way. I think so. It's like this. Is it negative or positive? I'm thinking now. Uh, it should be negative, right? Then, yeah, I know. That's the logic I'm thinking. I'm thinking whether it should be 2 minus 1.98 or 1.98 minus 2. Because this is the tricky part also. Yeah. Mm, let's see for example here yeah it's negative only so we have to use negative whenever they say decreases take the later value minus the first value always in any case when they say decreases from something to something so you take the thing the value they give after the two minus the value after the form so that's the way to interpret it okay so let me see now go out now no earlier so it's negative 0 0.02. And then area, they told you A equals pi R squared. So what do you get after your value of DA, DR is what? Final value after you solve. Two pi R, okay, continue. What will you sub inside the R? This value. Oh, now it's all on you. <laughs> sub two, okay. Uh, sub two, yeah, correct. Two by always up the original value. Because this is the original DA over DR. Delta A over delta R is the change after they stated this value. So that is what you want to find here. Okay. So, okay, okay. So what is the question actually asking here? What is the uh, symbol we use? Uh, Roslyn can try a solar. Approximate change in area, what do we call it? Delta A. Okay, correct, yeah. So this is our question. So whenever we have they tell you something like this, right? Always try to list down your info like this, this, and this. And then from here we'll use the formula DA over DR equivalent to delta A over delta R. So what's your DA over DR is four pi equals to delta A is our question over this one negative 0 0.02 so if you solve what you get final answer let's say i ask you give in terms of pi huh? uh negative 0 0.08 i think yeah should be huh? negative 0 0.08 pi and don't forget your unit cm square area okay so this is your answer yeah correct okay so this is all about differentiation already, based on the textbook. 
So, okay. So now I will go through some like analysis of the questions I think in the group. Might be useful for you. Lah. So, so far, okay. 